Hi. All right. So this week, um, I wanted to talk about uh, grief. And, you know, me, just like everybody else, well, maybe not everybody else, but a lot of people, most people, have had their run-ins with grief, whether it be with losing a loved one, um, the, having to depart with anything, you know, whether it be uh, your home, you know, with COVID right now, the biggest thing a lot of people are grieving with is uh, losing homes, losing jobs, valuables, a lot of things you're having to have separation with. And, uh, you know, the biggest thing we've uh, or th lost that we're having right now is people. So, you know, a lot of people are losing their family members to COVID um, and a lot of other illnesses. So, um, I have uh, an acquaintance or a friend who is currently having some issues and I just, this, that prompted me to want to make this video. So I just want to give my quick little thoughts on uh, what I went through and uh, not really what I went through, but what I learned when I went to grief counseling. Uh, so if you're contemplating going to grief counseling, this is these are some of the things that you're going to learn and hopefully this can give you a boost to make you want to go ahead and go to therapy or if not these are some things that can help you if you don't want to go to therapy so first things first um acceptance um, i'm not going to talk about all the stages of grief because you know i'm not an expert on grief um, i can just tell you the things that i i know um, but acceptance is very, very hard to accept that you have lost whatever it is that you have lost, whether it be a person or as I just talked about other things. Um, and it's very difficult to just accept those things, those facts. Hard facts are, you know, hard for anybody, whether it be, you know, whether it's grief or anything. It's just hard facts. Sometimes it's just hard to swallow. Like, man, dang, you know, that really happened. And when you're really trying to come to terms with that it makes it so real and that's the hardest one of the hardest things about grief is acceptance that you know that person or that item that whatever it is is no longer going to be in your life and no longer going to be no longer going to be present and for me when i went to counseling that was the one thing i really really just had to come to terms with i've suffered a lot of loss in my life and I you know for me I don't like going to funerals I do not and I just ooh, I did not want to go to my father's funeral when he passed away when my beloved ex when he passed away I did not want to go I just didn't want to go I don't like seeing people in that state um, I loved to just remember them the way that I want to remember them you know in their glory and their you know living life i don't want to see them looking like that i don't i just don't no matter how good the you know the mortuary can make them look i just don't want to see them that way it's very hard for me when my grandma died my grandmother passed away last year and i had so much anxiety we were driving to um my friend drove my car and we were in the car and i tell you i was sh my i was shaking all over and she was really saying any and everything to try to calm me down because i was i mean when i say there's a snake in my boots i was trembling honey like a hook in the church i was shaking because i just did not want to see my grandma like that, you know, but I had not seen, I had guilt as well because I had not seen my grandmother in so long and I lived, you know, I lived not far from her. But I, the thing, the reason I did not want to see my grandma because she had got to the point where her memory was gone and she was forgetting a lot and she was repeating everything and that was very difficult for me. I did not want to hear her continuously to repeat stuff. She would tell me something one minute and 30 seconds later she would restart, you know, would be repeating. So that was very difficult. And then on top of that, 
um, she would always ask about my ex-boyfriend that had passed away. And she didn't, you know, she was not doing it intentionally, of course, but it's just that she had gotten to that point in life where that those were the, the, those were the facts. And when he first passed away, that was just like ripping the bandage off. And before then, I was going to see her weekly. But it just it got to a point and then before I knew it, so much time had passed and I just could not, I don't know, I just couldn't ever get myself around it. You know, I thought about her often. Um, you know, I just could not ever get over that. <clears throat> and so after she passed away and I was, like I said, when we were driving to the funeral home to do the wake, Lord, I mean, I had anxiety and then, you know, we had to go five at a time into the chapel to, you know, view the body. <sighs> I'm talking about I was trembling. Let me tell you, this is a funny story. This is a funny story. I had told my friend in the car because I'm a clown. I'm telling you, you talking about a clown, this is a fool right here. So I had told my friend in the car, I said, let me tell you something. I said, do not let me pass out. She was like, well, sis, I don't know what to tell you because, you know, ain't like you no know, little girl. You know, I can only do so much if you hit the ground. <laughs> so I told her, I said, well, listen, let me tell you this. I said, listen, I don't let me go unconscious in this funeral home. You know what I'm saying? I don't want these funeral home people touching me. And I, I ain't trying to be funny for no offense to anybody that work in the funeral home or in the business. I don't want your hands on me unless it's my time. If I'm out of here, then do what you got to do. But until then, keep your paws off me. I don't want to be touched by nobody working in the funeral home as long as I'm alive. Please do not bother me. Just, I don't. Ooh, ooh. Now, if it's an emergency situation, I'm outside on the highway, 275, 75, somewhere, you know, leg toe up or something like that in the car accident, and you're trying to save my life, by all means necessary, take care of business. But I just don't want to be in the funeral home unconscious. And I told her, slap me, slap me silly if you got to keep me from passing out because I was so nervous about seeing my grandma. You know, I just didn't know what she was going to look like. And I just, I was so, I was just scared. And I was just, you know, oh, I was a wreck. And when I got to the funeral home and I was, when I get nervous, I cannot stop laughing. Everything was funny to me. And I mean, I was giggling like a fool. And everybody like, what is wrong with you? What is the deal? My cousins and stuff like, what's funny? And so I'm trying not to laugh, you know, but it's, that's how I cope with nervousness when i'm nervous i just can't stop laughing when i'm scared i cannot stop laughing so child we got in there and right before we was finna go in the chapel one of the people that worked through on this lady she came out and she was like you gonna be okay because she could see i was breathing shallow and she was like you gonna be okay i said i'm all right don't touch me <laughs> and everybody's laughing so i was like okay i'm sorry i didn't, I didn't you know I'm, I'm okay i'm okay and so it's just when I finally saw my grandma, I was like, oh, oh, I did all this freaking out for nothing because she looked like she looked when I remember her as when I was a little girl. She looked, they brought, I mean, I said they made her look so youthful. So she, they brought her back and they made her look like she did when I was probably six or seven. You know, when she was back, when she was zipping around, selling her Avon, driving the car and all this stuff. And so I was like, oh, okay. And everything, all that stuff just went out the window. I was fine then. I just was able to stand there and say and do and whatever, you know. But before then, I was like, whoo, baby. That anxiety and that grief and that nervousness was tearing me apart. So those are some things, you know, that will happen. It's going to be moments when you're going to be laughing because you're going to think about stuff they said. And the grief counselor told me, she said, you know, when you're grieving, you know, some of the things that help you get through things is thinking about the things that they, you know, you, the good times that you had with them, you know, how would they feel about you being so tore up for so long? Because I had, I'm going to be honest, this is a very transparent moment for me. I had gotten to the point where I did not want to live when my ex passed away. I mean, I'm talking about I wanted to be standing in traffic, just hit me. I mean, I'm serious. Like, I was standing in the road, and it was like, I ain't want to move. 
But it was so weird because I was standing in the road and God was like, girl, if you don't get your behind somewhere and get somewhere and sit down and stop being dramatic. Because every time the car would get almost too many turns, I'd be like, what is the deal? You know, like, just take me out. Jeez. You know, I know I, ha I didn't have no type of courage. Tell my doing that with no, you know, weapons or nothing. I just was like, just, I don't want to do it. And he kept coming to me in all kind of forms. And then I kept dreaming about him and it'd be so vivid. I mean, vivid. And, you know, I went to the beach one day and he was there as a black bird. And that bird followed me from my car all the way to the beach, sat with me, and he was making this sound and it was the nickname that he used to call me and I was just like this is so weird but I just boohoo cried and boohoo cried but it was just little things so even if you feel like you're sounding crazy or foolish or whatever whatever it is you gotta be and sound you just gotta sound like that because that's how you're coping that's how you cope and that's how you're gonna be able to get through your uh, grief now uh, trying to harm yourself, trying to stand in traffic or do anything to end your life. That is not okay. And you definitely need to seek help. If you are feeling as if any of those things that I just said, harming yourself, ending your life, or any of those things where you could not be here in the next moment, you need to stop this video right now. And I do mean stop looking at it and go and get someone else to intervene to help you please that make me that promise don't look at this tape for another moment go and get help because the person who has left or whatever the issues are the the reason that you're grieving and if it's a person they would not want you to do this they would not want you to harm yourself they would want you to continue to, to live your life and live it as best as you can. Okay? Please. So, you know, but if you're having any kind of these thoughts, confide in someone and get yourself some help. There's nothing wrong with it. Ain't nobody gonna be like, oh my God, here they go. Lord have mercy. This person hit them, flip this, Lord, they done went out the deep end. There ain't nobody gonna do that. Let me tell you, because we've all been there. Grief does a number on everyone. It's not something easy. I'm a person, I don't like dealing with feelings. Hate it to a T. I can't stand it. Uh, I cannot stand dealing with grief. When grief happens to me, anytime I had to grieve something, I want the feel, I want to feel how I'm gonna feel three years from now. That I want to be over it. I don't want to go through it, and that's just how I am. Even when it's just something where I'm slightly inconvenienced, I don't want to be inconvenienced. But I know I have to be sometimes. Things just gonna happen, and so you know, for people who are like you know, why well, however it is, however you're gonna feel, you're just gonna feel it. You know, it's gonna be normal to have these thoughts, but it's not gonna be normal for you to act on these thoughts, you know, if you're feeling like harming yourself. So let's get that out of the way. That is not cool. Do not do that, okay? Because God loves you and the person you're grieving loves you. You know, they're not here to tell you that anymore, but trust and believe that they were still here. They would not want you to do anything to yourself. I promise you that. Now would they? Think about it. Listen to their voice. Think about their voice. And now think about what they were saying. Now, are you laughing? Because I know that you probably like, they probably like, if you don't get your silly behind up and stop all this stupid stuff now. Because I know that's what some of my folks would have told me. Girl, if you don't stop, you know you just overreacting. Now, come on, get up. Because I know mine be like, you are embarrassing me. Get up. So, stop. But seriously, you know, those are just things that's going to happen. Um, but moving on. So this is another thing I had to learn when I was going through my grief counseling. So first of all, you have to accept that it has happened. Um, and once you do that, then you can move on into, um, okay, now what? Now I've accepted it. 
now I'm living in the reality of it. So now you're in the reality that, okay, this thing has happened. These people, this person is gone. This event has happened in my life. And so now what? So now you have to learn how to live in your new normal. You have to learn how to put yourself in a new normal. You know, I always used to say, you know, I could never see myself living without somebody. I could never see myself doing this way and doing that and blah, blah, blah. But the fact of the matter is, hopefully, praise God, that you are we're able to do that it's unfortunate that we have to but you you are and so once you do find out that you are and that you know that you prayfully hopefully still are living without that person or going through whatever you're going through you made it out on the other side um the thing of the matter is you're like okay i'm still here and now you have the thing is all right i have the memories from this person okay you have the memories from them and you take one day at a time don't try to like I said just a few minutes ago don't try to live today on day one how you would three years from now because three years from now that's a whole different you it's not gonna be the same you you gonna experience other stuff in your life that's not gonna be you you know today Today you are you from whatever the day is. That's you today. And you're gonna be a different you tomorrow. So focus on today. Getting through today. Take one day at a time. All right, what is my goal today? So what I did was, my goal was I could not stop crying. Every time I thought about the person who passed away, I'm about to tear it right now. Every time I thought about it, I just bust out crying. Somebody would ask me how I'm doing. I bust out crying. And it was very hurtful, very hurtful. And so my counselor said, well, set goals for yourself if you're tired of crying, if you're, you feel like you've all cried out and you're just tired of crying because it's, you know, your tear ducts and stuff, we like, girl, sis, pull it together, bruh, all right, come on now. But you don't want to, you, you don't want to stop crying because you just want to continue to be, you want to continue to grieve because it's just like, I can't believe this has happened, but it has. And so once you're at that realization that it has happened and you're just boo-hoo crying and snotting and slanging it and woo woo woo, you know, or, or you're just silent or however it is that you're taking it in. You're just sitting there and you're just like, man, this is, man. So once you do that, you take today. So what I had to do was, I had to say, okay. So I would be fine all day when I finally went back to work. Um, but I would, on my lunch break, that's my time to cry. And then I, I would cry for that whole hour. I would go to my car I would eat. I was not eating yet. Was not eating. I just couldn't. I just wasn't hungry. Food. I wasn't thinking about food. I just wasn't. You know, when you're grieving, you're just not. Most of the time. I ain't gonna say most of the time. For me, I was just. I'm not a person. When I'm stressing or anything like that, I don't want food. Some people, they want to eat. They overeat. But for me, I just don't want food. Um, so I would sit in my car and I would cry for that hour. And I, you know, that was my time. And I said, all right, when this hour is up, I have to stop crying. And so after that hour is up, I would, you know, try to pull it together and make my way back to work. And then when I went home at night, um, I would try not to cry, but I would write down and on paper what I missed the most mm -hmm. and you know what you miss the most and then it would be days where you'd be mad you'd be like oh why would why did this have to happen you know and you write down your your angry feelings write those down 
write down your why's write down all your questions you have to get it out of your mind if you don't get it out of your mind it's going to stay there and continue to tumble and tumble and tumble around like a dryer like clothes in a dryer it's going to continue, continue to do that so you have to get it out and you have to put it on paper and once you get those things on paper you can either keep it or you can do what i did i threw it away because once I was able to get it out and then like after a while, I, you know, I read it and I was just like, wow, wow. Like when I was ready to read it out loud or whatever, I, I threw it away. I was like, okay, I'm ready to let it go. You know, you never forget the person. You're never going to forget them. You're, they're always going to be a part of your memory. They're always going to be in your heart. You know, you always have your memories, your pictures, your whatever you have. You're always going to have that but it's the grief that you want to push out because for me you know you do whatever you want to do but for me that was what i wanted to get rid of because i didn't want it i mean grief to me is just like honey somebody smearing boo-boo on my arm Ooh, i do not put it on me i just don't want it you know because you're ready to you just for me i just i'm ready to get over it i don't want to be grieving you know and it's so difficult so once I was finally ready, I felt like I was ready to let go. I, after I had written all that stuff, I was just like, all right, shh, gotta go. But, you know, and it still was times when I would think, you know, even whew, a couple years down the road after the fact, think about it and start crying, you know? So it's not never gonna forever go away. Now my dad, he's been gone, let's see, 96. So that's what, 20 some years so you know you're gonna definitely have times where you're gonna think about them you're just gonna have waves of sadness you're gonna have waves of joy or what else or what if this you know they had still been here or, or what if this situation was still this or whatever you're gonna have all of that but over time it will slowly hurt a little bit less but don't rush it just like i said take one day at a time and it, you will get there don't let anybody rush you into the day you're going to get there don't rush yourself either now if you are not bathing okay that's a sign you're going into depression if you are not eating for days on end, that is a sign of depression and you need to get help. So if someone is asking you to eat because you have not eaten, you have not eaten. Eat a little something. You need to stay afloat still. Um, but it's, it's very difficult. I, like I said, I understand it all, but it's just going to take time to get to being able to really cope and really be able to go, you know, because 24 hours comes very quickly. Some days it doesn't come fast, but some days it does. And eventually you will be able to, you know, have a 24 hours and be pretty much grief free. But today, on day one or day six or whatever whatever day you're on that you see this video just know that you can do it but just take it one day at a time um, another th mechanism or thing that I learned when I went to grief counseling was um, to think about um, when you're grieving when you're hurting so bad you just feel like well, nothing else make it better. I mean, when you are just in that moment of oh, the whole world falling apart, everything is going wrong. What advice would that person give to you? Hmm? What would they say? Mom would give me so much encouragement, you know. Mine would tell me to, you know, why are you talking like this? Because you know you got these skills, you have these skills, you possess this, you have blah, 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 blah. 
and there's no re no reason for you to be saying these things because you got this and you got that you know don't doubt yourself or whatever and you know i understand you crying and tore up but you know for how long can you do that how long is that healthy that's what mine would have told me but in you for your situation you think about what advice would that person give to you you know would they give you a hug would they tell you whatever back rubs whatever you know and sometimes you just got to sit and sometimes you just got to have that moment and just be like listen for them or whatever whatever it is that you need now, if you all at the graveyard trying to do a seance now i don't i'm not with that so i ain't got no advice for you on that honey sugar i do not but i just know that what i did to cope and to get my through my grief so those are the things those are my thoughts on uh coping with grief uh there are more if you have any questions definitely feel free to post in the comments um I also forgot to mention that uh, if you're employed, most jobs or employers have a program called EAP, Employee Assistance Program, and they offer a world of services to their employees. Uh, most of the time they are free, at least for the first few um, rounds or whatever um, and they're free to the employees uh, for grief counseling I know for sure um, I'm a government employee let's say that and uh, the six first six sessions of counseling um, is are free so um, if you're doing any kind of thing like that uh, the first few sessions usually are free um, and if you need any any kind of help uh, whatever state you're in um, you need help looking for something let me know I'm very good uh, at finding people um, resources I, I'm a resource person I'm not a resource manager or human resource manager or anything like that but uh, I'm the person people call when they need help looking for things you know, cause I'm pretty sure I'm leaving out a lot, but I took some sleeping medication and I feel like I'm drifting off a little here. Um, but, uh, you know, if you have any questions for sure, leave them in the comments. Um, I'd love to hear from you guys. Let me know if you, any more topics that you would uh, like for me to speak on, let me know. I'm also gonna be talking about more about trauma. Um, and sexual abuse, sexual assault, different things like that, and how I made it through my situations. So I'm also studying to be a counselor. I'm almost done with, with uh, my degree. So I'll be working on my certification soon. Um, but yeah, so anyways, guys, I love you. You are love. Whatever you're doing, be good or be good at it. And I will see you guys on the next episode. Bye.